It's Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock Central Time. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it's the DJ round table time. <coughs> and you have to excuse me. I am suffering some allergies right now. Um, because of smoke coming from Canada from the wildfires up north. So I do apologize for that. And I don't know if anyone else is dealing with it with like we are, but uh, as DJs, uh, I'm sure it's uh, great for uh, lights. Uh, if you can get some lights up there high enough to see the beams go through, cut through the smoke. Uh, <laughs> speaking of that and what DJs do, if you haven't done so already, make sure you click that like button and smash that uh, thumbs up for me. It helps with the algorithm and helps with uh, YouTube promoting this video so other DJs can see this. As well as I appreciate if you could follow the channel. And if you're watching this live on Twitch, make sure you follow it live on Twitch. We are here every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock Central Time, 9 o'clock Eastern Time, or uh, 6 o'clock Pacific Time. So if you're out in the West Coast where we have one of our DJs, uh, or if you're out east on the East Coast where you have another DJ, or you have the Midwest and the Central Time Zone, like that we have down in Texas and up in Wisconsin, as well as myself here in Chicago. We cover almost all the time zones in the continental United States, except for mountain time. And we get into once in a while. Uh, so with that said, <laughs> I want to thank everyone for coming in tonight into the show and some fun stuff. Now, uh, always we start the show off with some stuff. And I actually saw on social media came up from uh, Revo Spin which they do 360 photo booths very heavily and they do a lot with um, dance floors as well. They just released, and again, I will put it down the link to it down in the description. They just released information, very basic information on a DJ booth uh, with LCD panels on the front and side. So you can do video with it. Uh, the price tag as they have on their website at the time of this recording is $4,000. So again, the link will be down below. You have to go to their website. If you're watching this, you know, a year or two down the road and it's $10,000, it is what it is, whatever they charge. I'm not representing them. I'm not saying anything about the product. The product just hit. It is new. I did send a link to all the DJs here. So they got a chance to take a look at it. And we were just talking before we came on to the show, onto the video, about it a little bit. Uh, I'm very intrigued about it because I like doing video. I know Jeff does video. Uh, I know Brentley, he just got a Toadmatic booth, and we were just talking about that. Uh, Braylon, I don't know about him yet. Matt, I know he does video here and there sometimes. Uh, Matt has a lot of stuff, especially the DMX stuff. So it's one of the things that uh, I'm going to start with the guys who don't have video right now. So Braylon and Matt. Uh, who wants to go first, but what do you guys think of that booth? Would that be something that maybe not today, but not too distant future, get something similar to it or that booth? What do you guys I think? think I, I think it's pretty cool. I mean, I, I've always liked the look for like a school dancer or anything in general of like your DJ booth and uh, an LED screen in front of the DJ booth and then another big one behind you. Kind of how they do it like festivals and smaller concerts i've always liked that look because then you could kind of map the visuals as one giant piece um so i've always liked that look i have a guy that does that so if like any of my clients ask about led video screens i have a guy that uh, is relatively cheap that i can have do it all for me my thing is i would never use it because then i'd have to hire a video person and uh, i'm already controlling lights and music and it's one extra thing i don't want to do but i think it's cool looking um I don't know though. I it's uh, it's too much money. Uh, I'm I'm good right now. I can't spend any more. <laughs> Upgrades are done. Uh, I, I, we are always, but we're always looking at the next upgrade. There's always something that catches our eye, equipment wise. That's that's one of the things that you know. It's like uh, it, it's, I go to Tracy. And I'm like, oh yeah, I need to spend money for this or spend money for that. And she's like, well, what about everything else you have? What about other stuff? I'm like, well, that they're a couple years old or a few years old. Technology has changed and we march on, you know, mm -hmm. and yeah, I have some stuff that's older and sitting there, uh, which, you know, always glad to sell. I know uh, when we had DJ Rachel on last week, she had some stuff that she was thinking of selling. So hopefully she will sell that. And if you haven't watched last week's episode, make sure you go back and watch uh, last week with uh, DJ Rachel 
And uh, it's always great having all these other people on because it's always different pers uh, perspectives and everything. And uh, Braylon, down in Texas, I know you guys do big things Big things down there. It's always bigger and brighter in Texas. At least the song says so. It's doing the stars at night, you know, big and bright. So, you know, down in Texas, do you think uh, a, a, a wedding or an event would go over big with a, a booth like that? I, I mean, yeah, I, th I think there's definitely a market for it almost no matter where you are, um, in my opinion. Um, but if you were to ask me personally, what I do one at this point in time, no, could I possibly see something in the future? Maybe. Um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely, there's a few guys down here in the, in the DFW, kind of like the North Texas area that they do have, um, booths that have, um, whether it's TVs on the front or they do have like an LED panel kind of thing, they have it. Um, but I don't know. I, I personally, for me, I just, I wouldn't at this time and, it's it's a maybe in the future, but most likely a, a not for me at least. Okay, so I'm going to go to the rest of the panel here, which uh, like myself and actually uh, Jeff, you and I have I think the same booth, uh, the Mesa Media booth, um, and I know a couple other companies that have a similar looking booth. So I, I think you and I have the Mesa Media. I know Brentley has the uh, Tomatic, uh, but. As someone who does video like myself uh, for certain events, what do you think of that booth? What do you think of something like that? Do you think that's something that could be in the future for you? Or would you just stick with what you have now and say, hey, it's easier? Well, I kind of like what I've got now. It's um, it's a pretty easy setup. It's a pretty quick setup. Uh, it's a 55 inch display on the front. Um, you know, the price with the display is, you know, well under a thousand dollars, under 900 bucks. So, if that price were to come down on that booth, uh, yeah, potentially it would, might be something worth looking at. Um, but um, it's a little price inhibitive for um, for most of us, I think, at this point. Uh, and as, techn as technology progresses, it could come down, you know. Uh, but it is an interesting look. I like the look of the wraparound. Um, that uh, that's enticing. Um, I do know that when I'm DJing with the 55 inch display on the front of my booth, you know, from the side, you know, you're not getting that same effect that the people up front are getting. So, so that would be the one thing that I would see that, uh, that could be game changing that, that wrap around that was, it's pretty interesting. It's pretty cool. And the one other thing also, again, cause you and I both have the same booth and we both deal with setting it up and putting it up and stuff. And, uh, I don't know if you, you use you use both shelves, right? The top shelf and the bottom shelf. So yeah. it, it's one of the things that you know, putting the the TV in the front. And I've a, I I had a I I still have I have a forty three inch, and I have a fifty inch to get a little bit bigger, a little more coverage. It, it just it sits pretty far out in front of the booth. You know, you're you're talking to you know the the bracket, which is you know maybe a two or three inches, and then the TV itself, depending what kind of TV. It's, you know, two or three inches. So it sits out in front of the booth a little bit. The one nice thing about I like about this is kind of like the Tomac that DJ Brentley has is that it's flat right there because the front of your booth is the end. And, like, that's, that's where the panel's at versus our our uh, booths. You have some inches in front and you have the TVs to kind of stick it out. Because yeah. I've, had, I've had people bump into the TV uh, and, and have a TV break, th not yet, thank goodness. But the thing <laughs> is, had, that I've had one break, but it was uh, it was not a fault of anyone other than my uh, my uh, young son who was helping me load. So <laughs> opera error, <laughs> yeah, it happens, you know. It, but uh, you know, from Costco, it was uh, you know three hundred bucks, so it lasted a couple of years. So it is what it is. I had the exact same problem that I did not like how far the Pro X uh, mount. Uh, ended up putting that TV out front of the booth. So I bought a uh, slim mount on Amazon for like 15 bucks and put it on there. So it is basically, it, it bolts right to the front uh, of the booth. And then the two strips that are on the back of the display are only about that big. So the total is only about that far from the booth uh, with the slim mount. And it's so easy uh, to set up and it just looks a lot cleaner. I do have concerns with people coming up to me um, 
requesting music or, you know, or talking and they're, they come up and they just want to, you know, Hey, how's it going? You know, they'll lean right on the TV and I'm like, please, please back off a little bit. So what I have done is, uh, is I've just started um, the past um, six months bringing an 18 inch sub and just putting it right there under so they can have to kind of go around <laughs> and uh, whether I need it or not, sometimes that 18 inch sub is, uh, is a blessing keeping people off the monitor. I was hoping you were going to say a spray bottle. You just <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? Right? That yeah. No, it, it's I I show my cup up here uh, because you have people come up with glasses and they come walking up with you know fluid, whatever it is, an adult beverage or a, a soft drink. Uh, you know, I have my Coca Cola glass right here, which I you know was drinking earlier in my water, and people walk up with stuff. They have you know they have ice in it. It's if it's a warm room, you have sweat coming down off the glass, dripping. You don't want it on your TV. So that's the other safety concern I look at, you know, with everything. And it, it, it's it's just one of the things that, you know, a $300 TV, you know, once in a blue moon, it's not a bad thing. But if it's a constant thing, then you got to reevaluate what you're doing, what kind of events you're doing, too. And I, I got to get with you later with the uh, the brackets, because uh, that's uh, an interest, interesting hack to do that to that booth. Because that's, that's the only bad thing I don't like about that booth is how far that bracket sits out. Yeah, and, yeah. My uh, the bracket that came with the booth has been sitting in its packaging. I never even uh, opened it. I, I took one look at it and I said, "Yeah, that's going to stick out too far." So yeah, yeah. The, 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 it's pretty easy to put on. The wing nuts are pretty easy to put on. It 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 it, it sits it sits okay. But like for like you you saw it and I do. I do use time. those the wing nuts that came with it. Those are the two wing nuts that I use to bolt the um the mount to the front. I use those. And uh, just and you, use the, you use the mounting hose holes that are in, pre-drilled into the. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Pro X. So it's a super simple. It's super easy and uh, quick. It's actually a quicker setup, and I think it's a little bit safer. Uh, this, you know, when it hooks in, the top hooks in. The bottom locks when it when it goes in, they lock. And the only way to get it off is it's got two um, uh, nylon cords at the bottom. You pull to unlock it, and then you pull the bottom out, and then you lift it off. So it's super easy. So yeah, it's the way to go. Yeah, because sometimes you know putting that TV on there, you're, you're I, I, have you ever dealt with it? It's a V-shaped uh, bracket that you actually slips in, and you can pull it off. You can someone can walk up and grab the TV and pull right off if they want to. And it it looks like it could like you know move a little bit too. It so. does. It, it it's never. I always see it never 100 percent straight. So I'm always trying to straighten it and try to knock one end down. You know, it's always the the fun stuff of of DJ World. And this is something that, you know, life hacks, that's a great thing. That's the reason why we do this show is to pass the information on to other DJs. And if you're watching this and you're looking at video, you know, do you have that Pro X table, the Mesa um, Media? Uh, this is a hack right here you can use for it. You can thank uh, Mr. Jeff Johnson right there in beautiful North Carolina for uh, giving you a hack how to bypass that bracket. Because now I got to look at that bracket and get that from Amazon. <laughs> but speaking of man who doesn't need brackets... DJ Brentley, he just spent some money with Toadmatic, and Toad, uh, we were talking a little earlier, uh, had a little shipping error um, yeah. with his uh, with his set, which is no big deal. You know, things happen. You know, nothing yeah. major. I'm, I'm not worried about it. I mean, no, no, they're an awesome company. Considering he had one, two, like eight of them at Midwest DJs Live. I mean, everywhere you look, there was a Toad this year, so. But yeah, I'm so far. I'm pretty thrilled with it. I really am. I mean, what? Yeah, it cost me a lot of money, and I don't see myself recouping the money I spent on it for a while, to be perfectly honest. But the convenience of it, out. I mean, and it's not just for the TV. It's because I've got everything kind of pre-wired and ready to go. So I show up, pull my two power strips out, plug everything on the outside in, and I'm ready. So it saves me the time of having to you know, plug in mixers and all of that, just like I have my rolling rat case. Like the downside of it, though, and I am kind of a jerk about people getting booze or drinks near my gear. If I see the booze in your hand when you're walking up to me, my automatic reflex is to put my hand up and to stop it. You will see my hand go up instantly and push it back. And I, I honestly... The one person who got, you know, snotty about it, I'm like, sorry, this setup here, and I waited out for her. She's like, oh, I had no idea. I'm like, 
your drink doesn't belong over my equipment, period. So, and one thing I have noticed since I've been using my white booths more and when I busted the toad out those last couple of times, people have gotten a lot more respectful about the equipment. When I come, like when I've used my basic black setup that every other DJ and their grandmother kind of has, there is no line of respect, etiquette or anything. But when I bust out one of my lightups or the toad as of late, people are super conscientious about like, oh, this probably does cost money. Or maybe the bride and groom have talked to their friends that are in the party and been like, this is how much we paid for him. And in his contract, it says X, y, which is, you know goes part and parcel of what you sent for later. If you damage my gear in any way, shape, or form, the couple who hired me is responsible. And I've got 48 hours until you have to find, we have to work it out where I'm getting my paid for it. Or at a minimum, if it's that bad and you can't, you're paying my deductible and I got to go to my insurance company. Either way, I'm not in, in that same regard. I don't want to take chances with my equipment. So, yeah, I'm real particular about where I set up at venues or the couples I'm working for. If they look like they're clowns on Facebook or social media that have no regard for a lot of it, I will probably back away from it just to protect my own equipment. But the booth itself is is phenomenal. I'm not going to lie. And comparing the two, I can't see having the need for those side LED panels. I mean, yeah, it might look great, but in all practicality, 90% of the people that are there at whatever event you're doing are looking straight down on you or at you. And if I'm at some venues, straight down at me, but up a little bit. So if you're even up, they're not going to see those sides at all, really. Based on like if you're on a stage where the stage is located, all of that. But I could see an interest in it, and at four grand, it just without being able to move it and seeing how those screens have nothing covering them to possibly prohibit bumping or just a little buffer. Even the toad has a little bit of a screen to it, not huge, mind you, but enough to maybe protect it from a drink spill. Well, I I think one of the things on the toad uh, he has put on there is a plexiglass. Yeah. barrier in front of the tv screen so you get protection yeah. and there's actually a video I, I i can't remember where it's at it's the one of their lcd panels and they actually show when a, a guy uh, at their factory they have overseas or whatever bang into the panel with something because it's not a normal lcd screen like a tv screen it's an lcd panel so I don't. I don't work the same as as a TV. That's why the resolution is not as great okay. on that as it is on a television. Television is always going to be better. Uh, but the nice thing with LCD panels, they will take a little bit more abuse than a TV will. So there, there's pro, there's pros and cons to everything. Okay. <clears throat> but the thing is that you know, the nice thing with the Toadmatic is that you have the wheels. You can roll in. Uh, it comes with the uh, skirt covers that come along. You basically, you know, magnetically held into place, right? They're magnetic. Yeah. They go oh, right no, Velcro. There. They're Velcro? Yeah, Velcro. Okay, they're Velcro. They, they go you, on. You can peel it right they, off. Yeah, they go right on and they hide that. The thing I'm looking at that at that uh, booth there is um, what I'm looking at is like, hey, you know, this is pretty cool. This, this is a nice uh, booth, but I look at it kind of like um i'd love to have wheels on it and kind of like toadmatic able to move in and out like a toadmatic you can just pull in pull out that that booth uh with that and i i think the sides if you look at like a bun booth or one of those really cool booths that put the dj out front in front of the you know how they have that t look and you're just standing in front with that and you have behind you a facade, and you usually have someone running a board behind you. I think that 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 displays a little bit more of that kind of thing versus like right now, the, like my booth and uh, the Toadmatic, you can put in line with everything. So you have two totem decks to you, your speakers, uh, so forth, so on. You can spread out, have that th line going across versus this booth, I feel that you'd have to kind of be out in front of it or have it further back and have space between you and everything else, so people can see that side. So there's again, there's pros and cons to everything. There's it's not there's no 
perfect you know, one answer and that's it. So uh, we got also coming in Mr. Dixon. Hi, Mr. Dixon. How are you doing today? Hopefully you're muted. I'm doing fine. Oh, there we go. Oh, you're a little bit loud. <laughs> um, right. But um, we we're talking about, I sent you the link also for the booth, uh, the LCD panel booth, and we're getting everyone's opinion on it. Um, in your market in Ohio, uh, would that be something that you would like to get? Or is that something you would say, hey, uh, maybe not right now, maybe in the future? Or you're like, hey, I, I really love it. What, what's your opinion on that booth? I saw the price and I just kept going. I was like, I can't afford that right now. <laughs> but I, I had thought about doing like a little TV or something. I thought that like have a like a video doing like playing videos <sighs> while I play music, especially for like the school dances. I thought that would be cool. Yeah, that, that's one of the things like I do, uh, Jeff does, and Brentley does. Brentley has uh, one of his Totematic booths, which uh, Totematic's in Ohio, right, if I remember correctly. So he's not he's not far from, from Dwayne. Uh, Jeff and I have you the same. Get your, if you want a Toad, you've got to get your order in. Like, he does every quarter, or I put my order in on New Year's Eve and got it in April. If that gives you the turnaround time. You got to get your orders in. You got your order in fast. See, like, uh, Jeff and I, we have the uh, ProX uh, Mesa Media uh, t uh, booth that you have the option to put a TV in the front. We both put TVs in the front. And actually, Jeff uh, gave us a great hack. Uh, so if you ever decide to buy a Mesa Media uh, booth, uh, Jeff gave a great hack that works better than the bracket that comes with it from uh, from from Prox. So, uh, but I put a 50 inch and and Jeff puts a 55 inch TV in the front of their booths. So uh, it, it's one of the things that um, it is nice. And you, yep, there's Jeff right there. So it, it yeah, that's great. the um, that's the setup. It's pretty low profile. I'll send you the link to the uh, uh, mount TV mount. I'm gonna also take that link if you don't mind, sir. I'm gonna put that in to uh, the chat down below on uh, on YouTube. So any our DJ comes walking across and knows exactly which one it is, and that way they can go back to this. And if uh, Dwayne ever gets a Proax Media uh, Mesa Media. You can then go there and click on it and, and get that the uh, same bracket. Hopefully it's still there and whenever you decide to get it. The um, next question I have uh, for the panel, I, again, I sent you guys a question before. Uh, this is also great from where our, one of our DJs always likes to uh, chime in on things. Uh, here's his thought that happened to him uh, Friday night. And I'm sure we, uh, we all uh, have a clause in our contracts agreements that we can cancel due to inclement weather. He was performing at a hotel outdoor rooftop bar um, on a river walk, and about 30 minutes left, he felt raindrops. The <laughs> dance floor was packed. He had about six grand worth of equipment. And here, here's one other thing. When you think about equipment, you also have to look at the hard drive on your computer. Doesn't matter if it's an external hard drive or use the hard drive on the computer. That hard drive has a lot of music on there. If you have a terabyte hard drive, that could be, you know, ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars worth of music if you went and bought everything. If you want to, uh, you know, you, you figure out how many months it took you or years it took you to build that library up, and then all of a sudden it got destroyed in that computer. That would be horrible. On top of that, um, you could pay money for that to recover it, but it's horrible. Uh, six uh, six grand worth of equipment. Um, I tried to push through, and then all of a sudden a downpour drenched us. Luckily, my gear was okay because we moved fast to get it under cover. Uh, let me click on this. Uh, but when do you normally end an outdoor event that you're already started due to weather? Sometimes a few raindrops or just that. So is it, you know, you have a few raindrops, that's it. Or like I know on my contract, if we look at, Anything greater than 30% chance of rain, um, we will probably say no to. Just because, again, it, it's it, depending on how elaborate of a setup, what we're doing. If it's a ceremony, ceremony equipment's quicker to move than versus a full-on setup outside. And we don't do too many outdoor. Usually it's in a tent um, event. And even in a tent with rain, we want to look at plan B 
if it's raining out, where do we set up at? Do we set up somewhere else? Does the tent have sides? Is it a permanent tent? Is it a temporary tent in someone's backyard? So it's things like that. So I'm going to start this off with uh, Jeff. Jeff, um, I'm sure in North Carolina, you do some outdoor events here and there. What is your cutoff for clement weather? Is it you see lightning and you're like, hey, that's it. And we're cutting it off. Is it huge raindrops? Is it what? what is your trigger points? Lightning is in the contract that if it's lightning outside, um, thunder is actually thunder and lightning. <laughs> um, then I shut it off. Simple as that. Uh, and that's in the contract. Uh, I will sit up outside as long as I have, um, you know, I'm under something. I'm OK. Uh, I always have a tarp that I can throw over my stand and the speakers. Uh, well, each speaker, each um, uh, I have cases for my speakers uh, that are just a slide over um, fabric, but they have pouches in the back. And in, in the back of each one, I have a garbage bag, you know, just folded up just uh, so if ever I have to, I can pull that out and just slide it right over the speaker. I don't have to take it down. You know, it's going to survive, you know, a, a rainstorm. Uh, but I do carry a tarp big enough to cover, you know, my main gear. Um, but most situations you're set up under a tent, uh, like Thursday this week, it's going to be sunny here and I'm DJing outside, you know, lunchtime for the local school, having a picnic for the seniors. Um, and, but I'm still going to take a pop-up tent to put over me to keep the sun off the equipment. And so, you know, I'm not going to get baked. Um, but situations like that, I usually will throw the pop-up tent on top of my uh, Suburban and take that um, just in case. But in most cases, especially weddings, you know, they're they're usually not going to uh, get married in the rain. They'll move it inside. They always have a plan B. Uh, but I have seen a couple of situations. I saw one recently where a couple, it started pouring down and they just stayed, they just kept going. And everybody, everybody just kind of like let it rain, you know, they just, but I felt like, good gosh, you know, what's what's the uh, the setup like there? You know, is the is there a DJ? Uh, is there a string band? You know, something. You know, those people are not uh, are not happy if they're getting rained on. So yeah, and the, I we just ran into something similar to this beginning of this year at one of the venues that we deal with. Um, the bride wanted this is uh, April. Uh, the bride wanted the ceremony outside. And uh, we were at, we got a little bit of snow. Where was that? It's further north and a little west, uh, about an hour and 20 minutes away from us, one way. And they got like seven, eight inches of snow. So the day before, um, she emailed us, said, yeah, the wedding's moved inside. When we got there, um, the grass area, the area where they have it out by a pond, was all covered in snow. So it was inches deep. So... She wasn't going to have her her wedding outdoors. She still had a very beautiful ceremony inside. But when brides talk about, I want outdoor ceremony, I want to do this, 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 this. Even when I talk to the facility, I always ask, what is their plan? What is their thing? And I tell the bride and groom, we're up front with them. If it's, you know, if we're talking, you know, bad weather, we have to look at, we don't want to be out there with electrical equipment because electricity and water does not mix and it's shocking for everyone involved. We don't want to be electrocuted. We don't want anyone else to be electrocuted. So you have to be smart about that. I know a man who does a lot of outdoor uh, weddings and events in Southern California. Of course, Southern California is not known for heavy rainstorms, uh, but lately they have gotten a few. Uh, but you have a lot of outdoor events, Matt. So what about you? What do you do for outdoor events? What is your trigger points? Uh, well, the rain, the weather's pretty predictable, um, with the weather apps now. So, I mean, if there's any chance of rain, then usually my couples have had a backup plan. Um, it's better to be prepared than get rained on. So I've never, but I mean, we don't really have like surprise rainstorms. Um, it's pretty, pretty predictable here. So I, I don't have too many issues. I don't really do that many outdoor events. Um, I do probably like 70, 30 indoor versus outdoor, but yeah. I mean, most of the venues have an indoor space that's like maybe not designed for the reception or maybe they're trying to do the reception outside, but then they move it. So I don't know. I don't really, 
we've only ever once like had a surprise rainstorm and it was like out on the patio which is where dinner was so we just grabbed a couple of speakers that were out there and moved them inside so it wasn't a big deal but uh yeah i mean most of your equipment is pretty ip rated regardless of what you think um you know a couple raindrops won't hurt a sprinkle won't hurt i mean my my thump go has taken some pretty heavy drizzle before and it's been perfectly fine um I, I wouldn't put my laptop in the rain, that's for sure. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't have anything in my clause about it, in my contract or anything. Um, I don't have anything about covering or anything like that. I mean, just says DJ should be set up where, you know, gear can be safely managed. So take that however you want. But I don't know. California is nice. It doesn't rain much. We've been having some cloudy weather lately and some trickles of storms, but, uh, Nothing too bad. Okay. And then I'm going to go with Texas, next state that also has a lot of warm weather. Um, uh, Braylon, I, I know uh, Jeff said he does get some snow where he's at. He doesn't probably get as much as uh, we do here in the Midwest, like, uh, you know, Dwayne, uh, Brentley, myself get. Uh, but I, do you get snow where you're at? or? Uh... Uh, we like to – we love it when we get snow. It's very rare when we do. If we get anything, it's ice, and okay. we shut down. So, like, we can't drive on ice. We don't have the infrastructure to – we don't have plows. We don't have anything. They salt a few bridges, and that's about it. And they just say, good luck. And so we kind of just shut down. Um, I actually did uh, – there was one of my gig logs that I did. It was, a, it was a Thursday wedding in February last year. And, yeah, it, we, it was the first day that we were able to kind of sort of get out on the roads if you were kind of risky, <laughs> you know. And uh, we had the wedding. Um, I was very surprised that we had it. But, yeah, um, it was a good wedding. It was inside. It was more of can people get to the venue was the issue. But uh, when it comes to weather and stuff, though, I mean, yeah, I have it in my claws that when it comes to rain and things like that, that um, it's up to my discretion and things like uh, things of that nature. I like to make sure that I keep my gear as safe as possible. Am I going to try to do my best for the for the couple? 100%, I'm always going to do my best, but I'm not going to risk my main rig, like my main setup. Um, my ceremony rig, like you said, those are small. They're maneuverable. You can get those in and out. Um, so I still, though, if it's like definite rain and they are just like, no, we're having this wedding outside and it's like, the rain is right there. I Then I'll put my foot down and be like, we can't do this. <laughs> but that's never happened. So, um, but yeah, definitely have had some uh, some hot summers uh, down here, 100%. But I always, I also have it in my closet. that I am to be provided a tent if it's a full-on outdoor event. Um, depending on the clientele that I'm working with, if it's like a, like a school dance or like a backyard something or other, it's hit or miss. Sometimes I'm under a patio, but I do require that I have some kind of coverage just because the Texas heat can take a toll on your, uh, on especially your laptop. I mean, it'll overheat within an hour and a half easy. Well, the other thing also is that, you know, that lovely glare from the uh, the sun beating down on your laptop and you're trying to read, you know, either right. there's virtual DJ Serato or record box. You're like, dodging. I mean, usually, I, usually I switch to the on Serato. I usually switch to like the white screen and it does help immensely but i know what you mean it, it doesn't matter it glare is glare and it, it sucks <laughs> so uh, do you do it like jeff does do you have uh, like emergency plan like he has some garbage bags uh some so honestly bags? no that's a great so that, that's actually a great idea to kind of just keep some i never really thought about trash bags um depending on the event though i will bring a tarp of sorts or some kind of cover like a like a blanket of something or a towel just like a just to cover up my main system but that's only for events that it's like okay i'm gonna be outside the weather's kind of iffy then i'll pack it but do i just carry it with me at all times no it, it, it's it's pretty you know and this is one of the things i know we have on our van um and we we actually use it more than just for case rain we have lawn and leaf bags the big huge bags on the van you know they come you buy a box of them they're rolled up and we have them because when like with jeff something happens cover speakers cover everything as much as you possibly can as quickly as you can right because again even if you're like hey no, there's not a rain cloud in the, in the sky and all of a sudden one just says hey you know what we're gonna open up and dump on your on your party or on your event you might as well be prepared and versus not prepared and that that's a Again, another great thing to share is having extra stuff there. 
but I want to go to my uh, my next one, uh, my other Midwest brother there in Ohio, just the east of us, and ask you, sir, what do you do for uh, rain or snow or any kind of outdoor event? Do you have clauses in your contract that says that, hey, you know what, if it's, you know, if it's going to rain out, you, I, need, I, I can't be out there or do you uh, just, you know, chance it or what do you do? What, what, is, what is your plan? Well, there is, a, there is, I was going through my contract while you all were talking. There is um, something in there saying that in case of like something beyond my control that um, everything gets shut down. But normally we sit and discuss that ahead of time. If it's outside and the possibility to rain, what is plan B, C, D and all that. Then also I have a tent and then I have the tent with the panels that I can throw up to cover me. So that's how I handle it. But then when it starts raining anyway, people, everybody else is outside in the rain, so they're going to leave regardless. So the party will be over. Well, and, unless you're like uh, um, one of those outdoor festivals like we have here uh, or out in the California uh, festivals, I'm sure North Carolina has their festivals too. And sometimes in the rain, you get people, you know, they like sliding across the, you know, the, the mud and stuff like that. Even like baseball games, when they, you know, they were rain, kind of rained out, you see the players sometimes go out there and slide across the, uh, the covers. So it, it could be fun, but sometimes it could be dangerous, especially with, uh, again, we do with electrical equipment and water. That's not fun. But so you have in your contract that, you know, you have uh, protection. Or if you if you feel it's unsafe, you're not going to do it, which is what you want. Yeah. Um, DJ Brentley up in Wisconsin, the Great Cheddar court Curtain north of me. Um, you get a little bit more snow than we do. Um, you get a, a tad bit colder than we do. Not much, you know, a few degrees cooler. Um, so with you, what do you do for outdoor events? Would you have do you have a kind in your contract? Do you say, hey, certain percentage, no way? Well. In my contract, I specifically have it that if at any time, be it weather, be it obnoxious guests, or anything that could be you know detrimental to my equipment, I hold the right to stop immediately and pack up. Would I pull that? No, absolutely not. Unless, I mean, there's been one time I came within about 30 seconds of being like, we are done because the guests were that out of line. And... Like I mentioned before, it was when I was using my very basic black setup, you know, no frills, no nothing. And it was the wedding that I learned you can turn a dance floor into a slip and slide if you pour enough beer on it. And everybody was over 35 at this party. I'm not kidding. It was that bad. I was there. She was there until I had to call her mom and say, get her now. Shirts are coming off. The floor is getting, yeah. But when it comes to my gear, I'm not taking chances. Absolutely no way in God's green earth, especially maybe two, like five years ago when me working meant supporting her, having food to eat, I was a little bit more risky about it. Nowadays, because I've invested like with the toad, there's no way in God's green earth I want that outside if it's even drizzling. That's, you know, after all said and done, that's 6500 bucks of equipment in one package. Too much of a liability. But if it's like a ceremony, I've got my, if you watch my channel, you've seen my simple ceremony setup. If I lose a Mackie 12, okay, so be it. My mic setup, I always call Phoenix and be like, hey, I need a new one, replace this, hook me up with my product, and let's move on. So I have that going for me for my outdoor rig. The only thing that would really matter is my Halo Bolt battery pack. And for the whopping 100 bucks I spent on that, okay, fine. I can tell a bride and groom that if you want to do this and anything gets ruined, you're covering it, but it's all easily replaceable. Now, if it's really coming down, I'm out. No way in God's green earth I'm doing it. And the snow thing, it depends. And you being from the Midwest, you know the snow I'm talking about. If it's that super dry, just blows right off, let's go. Because the last time I did a Packers game uh, at Stadium View, which is a couple of Novembers ago, it was nine. A it was nine a.m. The sun was shining. I literally do sound check, go have a cigarette, walk back on the stage, and it just starts coming down. There is no. And I'm like, oh, this is gonna be a great afternoon. And next thing I know, the sun 
snow breaks, the sun comes out, and there is 10,000 people on the next two blocks in front of me screaming. So for a scenario like that, and I did bring my DDJ RR, the cheapest Pioneer record box deck I own. So if anything did happen outside that day, being winter, it was the cheapest deck I had. But for an event like that, I'm willing to push the boundaries a little bit more because the promotional gain from that, yeah, if I wrecked the deck, they would have replaced it, cool. But the promotional gain out of that, my name is just in front of everybody who's walking past Stadium View to go to Lambo. That money is worth it in any way, shape, or form. So, and having friends that actually DJ for the Packers, all the better. You know, so they as yourself as a Chicagoan, a former Chicagoan, you were wearing your Bears hat, Bears shirt, Bears oh, jacket, no. and have the Chicago Bears flag behind you and playing Bear Down Chicago Bears every you know three songs. Oh no, right? that oh no no no. I, I will not even <laughs> just because the folks that uh run Stadium View know I'm from Chicago, I will not put my name in the hat for the DJs to DJ the Bears Packers game. Because I, I want no they all know I'm a Packers fan, but even still, I don't want to get that kind of roasting out of them all. I'll take the Seahawks, or this year, I am I think I'm doing the Kansas City Chiefs game. So, very non-Chicago games. Oh, well, I'm cool with that. You can you can tell them I'll come up there and do the, Bear, the Bears-Packers game. I'll do the Bears. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll come wear my Bears shirt. I'll, I'll come wear I have a Bears flag. I, I you know, <laughs> I, I, you know. I I, I I I know I know a guy who has a bear ambulance, you know, an old former ambulance made into a bear's tailgater you, you, truck. You you, you, you you can do that, but there is an axe throwing bar right down the street from the, and, and they drink, you know, alcohol and axes don't necessarily mix. It's okay, it's okay. Well, I'll buy him a beer; they'll be happy. You know, it's like, come on now, we're all football fans. Have a beer. <laughs> So there, this, do you happen to do like what Jeff does and like I have, do you happen to have some like garbage bags or something you could throw over your equipment just in case of, again, the, the light snow, you blow off stuff. I know, again, we get it. You get it. Uh, yeah. I'm sure uh, Dwayne gets it in Ohio. And then you had the heavy, wet stuff that it's like, you know, five pounds uh, you know, for a little scoop of it. Uh, but do you carry with you even in the summertime in case you do something outdoor like a, a ceremony? Do you happen to have some of the garbage bags or something in your your toolbox or your little grab bag? Yep. In every one of my setup cases, I have trash bags. And in all of my computer bags, I will have, you know, a couple of extra shopping bags from the grocery store. So I, if it's really pouring, I get my computer in there. I can cover it up in those bags. Anything I can do to seal up my equipment. Even my cables, I can put in a sealed Ziploc bag. I, uh, my headphone and computer cable. And that's XLRs, the, yeah, they'll dry out. And that, that's one of the things. Yeah, XLRs, as long as the ends are not wet, the actual cable itself, if it's, if it's moist. Um, I have on the van, I have a towel, you know, rigor. You know, you can buy cheap towels from Walmart. Uh, have a couple on the van. You can wipe down paper, roll paper towels I have out in the van. I have alcohol. I have bottles of alcohol everywhere. Not just for you know, cleaning, you know, wiping out microphones and so like cleaning things. I have alcohol wipes and stuff. Uh, the big tubs uh, to clean things because again, we ever since even before COVID, I was doing that before COVID. Uh, one of the things also I use, and I have a case of it, is microfoam. Um, the company's down in um, Florida. Uh, this product is designed to sterilize and deodorize microphones. Um, they are it's cherry scented, great great product. I it, it, it's a foam product comes out. You put it on a microphone, you wipe it down with it, and it sterilizes and it deodorizes the microphone. Um, and you know we all try and do stuff with that, but having those garbage bags, uh, I, again, I've used them more and just cover equipment up. I've used them for. Everything from some flowers to, uh, you know, people with they want to take their balloons with them. So it, it's it's one of the things that having those bags. Uh, it's always seen always funny how we go through them for a bag here or there for something. So it, it's 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 more than just protect equipment, but you just got to make sure you keep on top of it and keep bags in the vehicle, or it's somewhere handy if you if you don't have a, a vehicle just for the business. Hey, buddy, I got another hack for you that I use on a lot of my equipment. There you go, uh, sir. Another hack. There we go. <laughs> uh, 
uh, whenever you buy a piece of equipment, uh, it comes in a box and it's always a big package of desiccant in there. Um, some sometimes they're pit, big packages like that. Uh, I've got one of those uh, in just about everything I own. Uh, there's one inside my uh, controller case. Uh, there's one uh, inside my computer case. When I put my my hold up my computer and put it in, there's one in there. You know, you never know when you're going to be in a wet situation or even just a damp situation um, where you know you're going to be bringing that home with you. So it's it's good for that stuff to soak it up. And you're talking about the squares, like the, like the the moisture removing the, squares. Even the small yeah. ones will work. Yeah, you can get a handful of those. And uh, I've got a I've got a box in my basement where I keep all my gear. It's just you know just all the desiccants I've collected over the years. And uh, they're super great, especially I highly recommend in, in a controller case. Uh, so I just keep one underneath my controller in there where all the wires are. So it's a good little hack. Well, yeah, and it, it cuts down on mold and mildew, too, because that, you know, you know, that moisture level there, which is that's again, that's a great thing to have. And I'm sure you probably can go on Amazon and buy replacement ones. If you don't have them, you can probably will go on there. And, and Amazon has everything. I'm sure, I, I, I haven't looked yet. But I'm sure if you look real quickly on Amazon, you might be able to find, you know, those packs pre-done. And that is another great hack to use because, again, we want to save our gear. Uh, one of the things I actually do on my uh, my XZ um, and I actually learned it for a couple of other people was, I again, I have a towel. Uh, Tracy went to Walmart and got, uh, you know, a cheap towel. It's, it's brown. I didn't care what color it was. And I have it on top of my controller and I have that that shelf because I like the shelf going across the top of the of the case. And I just, you know, lay it on top of there, fold it up, pull the case back, put the cover on. Sometimes it's a little pain in the butt because sometimes the cut the, the towel wants to stick out a little bit and you got stick in there with your fingers and traces on the other side sticking in with her end. But it's one of the things that it, it absorbs moisture and stuff like that and keeps the dust off as much as possible. Now the other thing I also have, uh, I'm sure you guys probably may have it at home, but I always have it with us. And I, I think our I had to replace the, the ends is those uh, dusters for um, that, you know, um, you have a little plastic handle and you put a little duster on it and you actually wipe down uh, stuff and it wipes off electronics, keyboards, computers. Uh, I, you know, paintbrush, I, paintbrushes I, work really well for that too. I have a, I keep a paintbrush in my in my bag, um, a soft one. Whenever, yeah, like a soft brush. If I'm ever, you know, at an outdoor event, and usually the next event I come to, I'm like, man, that got dirty. I just, it works really well. You know, another thing that works really great too for dust and dirt, uh, and you can get it from any photo store. Uh, they have it looks like um, uh, the thing that you actually like puff up a uh, BP cup. Air bubble. Uh, yep. And you use that, it has a little straw on the end of it, and it does two things. Tracy found this out from a vendor. Uh, you blow candles out with them. We just had a wedding uh, a couple months ago, uh, a month ago, that she was using that, going up to the candles and go poop, poop, popping all the candles out with it. So she was taking candles out with it because, uh, you know, that she does a coordination size things. And the other thing is they get some heavy dust, you grab that, and you, you could actually blow out, like, between your keys and stuff like that instead of grabbing a can of duster. But I also care always have a uh, uh, a uh, computer screen cleaning kit with the microfiber cloth and the special cleaner that's designed not to affect or hurt your screen. Because you, again, you 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 invest a lot of money in your computer. It doesn't matter what kind of computer it is. And again, you want to defend and protect those investments and not waste a bunch of time and money. So, Dwayne, do you have any little hacks that you can give to the people out there for uh, you know saving your equipment, protecting your equipment? Uh, no, I just keep mine in the bag and then have the little, have the, the blue micro um, fiber cloth and I just wipe it down. And I do have that can of d duster that I have to uh, do my keyboards every so often. But again, having a microfiber cloth, not everyone thinks of that. They just grab a little paper towel or a napkin and use that. And paper is very fibrous and it will scratch screens. It will scratch things. So you never want to use a paper towel like on a TV screen or a computer screen. Um, it will scratch it very easily, just like glasses. And I know a couple of people here wear glasses, and I worked in the optical field for quite a while. Um, and that's one of the things you see people come in with glasses, uh, sunglasses or regular glasses. 
they're scratched up because they use they go and grab a paper towel off the kitchen sink and they go clean their glasses. Well, that scratches, they get micro scratches from that and it gets worse and worse and worse over time. So that's why they always tell you microfiber, microfiber. Microfiber cloth is one of the best things to have around electronics too. It really protects it. Matt, what about you? Do you have anything uh, that, that you use or any tricks that you do uh, that you can say it's a hack that works for people? Uh, yeah, I got hacks galore. Um, best one I've been using lately. I kind of got tired of bringing a table, uh, cause I use an adjustable table. I don't have a flight case, uh, for my stuff. I, my setup's always different. So I just lay it out all on the table. Uh, everything's in soft bags, but I don't put bags or anything on the table. And so I had a five foot adjustable height table, which were great, but it was plastic and eventually, you know, too much wear and tear and it ended up warping, looked like crap. And, so I found this five foot heavy duty wooden table and it's great, but it's not adjustable. So I found um, they make these little risers called lift your table. Uh, they're like 40 bucks for a set on Amazon or something like that. And they're, they're rubber and they have like steel on the inside and they go, you just put one on each leg and you instantly get it at counter height. Uh, you can even get it all the way up to bar height if you prefer. Um, and so I just... If I show up at a venue, they've got a six foot table for me. Just pop those legs under there. Tablecloth's already set on the table. I'm pretty much put my facade in front. Good to go. And if they have a different style table, there's another, I don't know what the brand is, but on Amazon, there's these other ones that are similar to like bed risers, but they're a lot more sleek and elegant looking. And they're just these circular black things with a steel top at the top of it. And they'll raise it like three or four inches. So um, that'll bring it up to a better height. So those are like, my so I, I keep a, a tote uh i put those in my tote with all my like scrims and tablecloths and other accessories and uh that way no matter what when i show up at a venue whatever table they have it'll work so okay. um that's that's my one uh if you have white gear magic erasers are great to keep in your uh in your gear bag they have like little tear off ones in a little booklet sheet uh those will keep your up lights looking nice and clean the scuffs off um I also have a paintbrush. Um, what I use for my sparklers, I have a USB-C rechargeable compressed air blower. And uh, so it's basically like dust off, but in a rechargeable version. And it's pretty powerful. It's not as powerful as like CO2 is. Uh, so if I'm ever at a gig and I have like a 20 pound CO2 cannon, I'll just use that to clean everything off at the end of the night, get all the little granules off. But uh, uh, this works great for sparklers because you don't want to keep the little those little metal shavings that come out of them. If you put them on a plastic surface and wipe them with a cloth, they'll scrape it up. So you kind of got to blow them off. So I keep that in my bag. Um, the X vibes, the wireless uh, XLR transmitters. Those are great. Um, what else? That's pretty much it. I mean, I, I have a lot of, I've, I've tried to, I have a lot of totes, but um, I've tried to like condense my stuff into as few trips from the car to the venue as possible. So and that, that's the things work smarter and harder. The one other thing also having the CO2 in case, in case, and I, I shared with you guys that uh, pitch, that video of that uh, pyr uh, pyrotechnics uh, <laughs> that went awry at a, a venue down in Mexico and caught on fire. Uh, CO2, if you do happen to have something go awry, at least you can have some kind of suppression and put out because it's the same thing they put in a fire a CO two fire extinguisher. You could put out a you know electrical fire with that um, if you want your sparklers to decide to you know go off and decide to do something they're not supposed to do. It, it does uh, have an extra um, that is an extra level of safety. They can't squirt in each one's face, but you can at least put a fire out with it and not to worry about the uh, uh, causing damage to the facility. Uh, what about you, Brentley? Do you have any hacks? Uh, I'm sure you have a couple hacks in, up your hat as well. I mean, when it not necessarily hacks, but I keep like little odds and ends in my rat cases. Like I've always got cleaning wipes, especially with my wipe setup. Like whenever I'm tearing my cables down, I am cleaning them off. Just I'd rather do it then and make sure I'm putting it all the way clean and tidy so I don't have to worry about it the next time I'm busting them out. Um, I do keep a lint roller with me all the time, and I cannot tell you how many times when it comes to the wedding party's men that I'm like, here, guys, before you go out for pictures, just take the damn thing. Clean it up because you all look terrible. And there's been that. 
do have a magic eraser, cleaning wipes. I do have Lysol and stuff like that. I think I've even got a Tide pen in my my kit. Uh, black, I keep a Tide pen in my car at all times. It, it just yeah. See, I have spray bottle. Uh, I've got a black magic marker just in case somebody you know. So you can get by fixing a few odds and ends if you need. Like I can't tell you how many times I've had to fill in somebody's shoe because they scuffed it, and at least the marker will take off some of the scuff and shine it again a little. Things like that, and I'm always conscientious about have, making sure all my setup is clean when I'm using it. So even when I'm setting it up, if I see something I don't like, I will go and clean it all off again. So one of the things I, I will say about this is that because of Tracy and us, you know, for a long time, we tried to help our customers out. I'm sure everyone here helps our customers out and so forth. We actually have what we call a jump bag. It's uh, we got off of Amazon. It's actually a medical jump bag, like you know, a paramedic would have multiple compartments. And in that, we carry about seven or eight Tide pens. We carry uh, you know bobby pins, safety pins, super glue, uh, sewing kit, scissors. Uh, we have uh, a, 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 because I'm CPR certified, um, a rescue breather. Uh, we have stuff on there. Uh, shoe shine kit stuff for that time of the month for for ladies. Uh, anything else that we could think of, we have on there in those bags, and because it has multiple compartments, it's nice because the fact that you can store things in different areas. And I could tell you, I can't tell me how many times you go through Tide pens a year. You know, I'm always buying Tide pens to replace the ones we've used because the fact that things happen. We just give them out. Say, here you go, just take it, just take it. Uh, lint roller, yeah, that's that's another thing that you know. It, it's amazing what you you find that you need, and also someone comes up and goes, "We were told you have this." I even carry on my van um, a, a cheap tool kit. Um, it's a, right now it's a Craftsman one I got off of um, Lowe's. It was like you know twenty five, thirty five dollars. One of the real basic hammer. I think I couple, have the same one. I think yeah, I a couple of sockets of plastic, cheap. You yeah. know, it's not, not not great. It's not the real like original OG crafting stuff from Sears. It, it's 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 not bad stuff. Uh, it's it's kind of basic, but it's a nice tool set. And actually, one of our weddings we had before, uh, the groom comes up. He's they're putting together the altar, and he goes, "You wouldn't happen to have a hammer, would you?" Yes, we do. <laughs> I get asked that all the time, all the time. It's 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 again. If you go to uh, Lowe's. And you could look at, or you go to Home Depot, they have the cheap toolkits there that it's, you know, a socket set, it's got an adjustable wrench, a hammer. It's nothing crazy. It's, it's you know, $25, $35 around there for pricing. Um, it's worth having. I think it has a, a ruler, it has a ruler with it too, so you can measure things. It, it's nice because it, you use that here and there. We don't carry it with us, but you carry it on the van. And if I need to, you know, Tracy will go run, grab it, or... Uh, one of our employees will go run and grab it because you never know what you run into. And it's just those little things like that that makes you different than the other guy come walk in and go, oh, well, I was, guess I'll do it, you know. And that's that's the thing is that I like what we give information because we want the, our, our friends, the, everyone who watches the show here, we want to help them out and make them, you know, better DJs because we, you know, we all run into things and sharing out, you know, the, 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 these little mind nuggets here of uh, information, you know, these little hacks, you know, Jeff with the garbage bags, you know, uh, and that, you know, that, uh, uh, that mount for the TV for the booth I have, you know, again, I'm going to, I'm going to again, post it down below all the information and, you know, having stuff, you know, the, the packs for the, uh, with the, uh, the gel that absorbs moisture in it and everything else, every else add, even, you know, uh, Dwayne with the microfiber cloth and, you know, all that stuff like that, it, it's it's important things to have and make our lives easier and make sure that we as DJs, you know, maybe we help out one of the bridesmaids or we help out one of the groomsmen or we help out a guest at the wedding or we, you know, help ourselves out of a situation that, you know, hey, we couldn't avoid we had to do this, but we have protection, especially if you're doing something outdoors, having those garbage bags in you know, inconspicuous little area with you know, in, a, in a pocket somewhere on and, and grab and cover your equipment. That right there again is huge. When it, you see that, uh, that that question that you know he has money out there sitting out there equipment, and thank goodness he was able to move it and that damage. But still, you don't want to have anything happen to anyone's equipment. 
Wow. So with that, uh, again, I want to thank you all for tuning in. Thank you, thank you to the panel for coming on here and giving those little life hacks. Uh, you know, I got to thank you all for coming on. Dwayne and Jeff, thank you guys both for coming in tonight, as well as Braylon. Uh, I know you can come in every so often. Thank you, as always, Matt and Brentley. Uh, we appreciate you guys, and we appreciate you all for tuning in and watching us. And if you guys have a question, comments, critiques, criticism, put it down below. Tell us what we're doing. You want to have a question about something? You have you want to ask something? Ask down below. Other than that, we'll see you guys next time on the next show. Thank you so much for tuning in. You guys all be safe. Peace. <laughs>